well the question what we are having is what is the force on a any one charge uh, one of the charge at any corner due to other charges at other corners here we are having the cube and at every corner we are having charges of magnitude q okay and the length of each side of the cube is a so every side i must uh, say the length a every side the length is a and what should be the force on any one of the charges due to all other charges this is the question what we have to solve and to do this i take this picture many times uh see this one yeah what we are having is again the same cube uh, and uh, in this picture i am finding the net force on charge number 7 so this is the charge in my mind on which i am finding the net force from all other forces and i have chosen the coordinate system such that charge number 1 is at the origin okay and all other charges are distributed around this corner so you are seeing the numbers in detail so and uh, don't forget i vector is uh, the unit vector along x axis and j is along y axis and k is along z axis and then uh, in the next uh, picture what you are seeing is this one okay so in this picture uh, you know you should know first the basic expression for coulomb's law is given by Uh, f is equals 1 by 4 pi epsilon o q1 q2 divided by r square into r cap so if i say this is a q1 and here is some uh, q2 uh, the combining line is this one so the joining line and this is our vector and uh, the force on this charge will be here so this is how you have to represent and force is given by this equation if q1 is equals q and q2 is equals q again so you can say q1 q2 is q square okay so this becomes q square uh, so that is what uh, you can easily say so this is q square this is what you can say and uh, writing this many times uh, a little difficult so i write f is equals omega divided by r square into r cap and r cap simply tells you the direction r is the distance between uh, the two charges and here omega is stands for this much it is q square divided by 4 pi epsilon was this convention i am using many times and now so see this one and here we are finding f6 f3 and f8 so how much is f6 so f6 is nothing but the force between uh, force on charge number 7 due to charge number 6 the distance is a right so and f6 should be uh, omega divided by a square and uh, i cap i cap stands for the direction that is along x axis so this force is acting along x axis so i cap so that means f6 is this much and similarly f3 so charge number 3 is here and uh, the distance is again a force is acting vertically upwards this is along y axis and f3 should be omega divided by a square into j cap and meantime we have to find f8 charge number 8 is here and force on a uh, 7 is a uh, f8 so which is acting along z axis so which is a uh, omega divided by a square into k cap this will be the force on uh, uh, charge number 7 due to uh, 6 7 and 8 uh, but still there are many other charges we have to think further and in this picture uh, what you are seeing is you know we are thinking about uh, the forces due to the corner charges 2 4 and 5 uh, you know the distance between 2 and 7 charge number 2 and 7 is root 2 into a right so and uh, the force between these two that means force on charge number 7 due to charge number 2 is f2 which is acting along this direction okay so this direction which is f2 and f2 is given by this equation this can be split into its component so say f2 is acting here right f2 is acting here this can be split into the f2x component as well as f2y component so when i split it into two components i got uh, here na uh, f2x and f2y so this is how i can rewrite Uh, and on combining these two together 
I get the F2 vector in uh, you know vector form. So this F2 can be written like this F2 vector. So meantime I can find F4. So the charge number 4 is here. The distance between charge number 4 and 7 is again root 2 into A and which is acting the force is acting in this direction upwards. Right. So this can be written like this. Well, so meantime F5 can also be written like this F5. So charge number 5 is here and distance between charge number 5 and 7 is again root 2 into A and uh, the force is acting along this direction. So along this line it should be shown. So this can be written like this. So this is F5 and we have the collections of the forces F2, F4 and F5. Uh, remember we completed uh, 6 charges uh, that is uh, 3, 6, 8 and 2, 4, 5. Still one more charge is left that is charge number 1 that we have to think in our uh, next part of the video. See this. Here what I am having is uh, the force on charge number 7 due to the charge number 1 alone. And here you must be careful this length uh, charge number 1 to charge number 7 is uh, root 3 into A. Therefore the force uh, F1 is of magnitude this much. When you split it into three components, right? So one is along uh, x axis, one is along uh, y axis, and one is along z axis. So you will get their components. Okay, so this should be k vector. So F1 is equals this much. F1 is equals this much. Okay, so now we got every detail uh, that means uh, the force due to every charge on uh, charge number 7. So now we have to combine all these things together to get the net result. Here is what you are seeing. Okay, so you see this. Uh, the net force on chart number 7 uh, will be along the direction 1 to 7, right? So this diagonal. So along this diagonal we are having the net force which is given by F7. So how much is F7? F7 is nothing but the algebraic sum of all the forces what we found previous. So in our previous part we found all these details, right? So all these details, I have written all these details here and I should make this correction. This should be K vector, okay? So all these vectors what we know, when you combine this algebraically, add them algebraically including the vector notations, right? So when you do that, so you will get this one. So I don't use uh, this uh, this method. I simply mention omega and F7 is nothing but omega divided by A square into this much. Right. Omega divided by A square into this much where omega is nothing but uh, what I said. Q square divided by 4 pi epsilon O. So this is how you should remember us and F7 gives you the net force on charge number 7 due to all the charges at every corner. Okay. So this is how uh, you should remember you know, for uh, the examination purpose. Also, so don't forget this one. So if you are uh, going for a competitive examinations, uh, you should remember this equation all the time.